After getting opposition support in the upper house, government is keen to get juvenile justice amendment bill passed in Rajya Sabha today. Parliamentary Affairs Minister Venkaiah Naidu said that the passage of this bill will be tribute to Nirbhaya. He further added that the passage of the bill will act as a deterrent to occurrence of Nirbhaya gang rape like incidents in future. The bill proposes lowering of juvenile age from 18 to 16 in cases of heinous crimes like rape and murder. Both houses of parliament yesterday witnessed uproar over allegations against Arun Jaitley's involvement in financial irregularities in the DDCA during his tenure as the body's president. Amidst din, the finance minister rubbished all allegations and categorically called the charges baseless. Meanwhile, BJP President Amit Shah has rubbished the charges against Arun Jaitley and said that the party stands firmly behind him. In Harana, a Rotak Sessions court sentenced to death seven accused in the Nepali deaf and dumb girls rape and murder case of Rotak. The girl was subjected to inhuman torture and gang rape before her murder in February this year. A minor accused in the case is being tried in a juvenile court, while a ninth suspect has committed suicide earlier. In Assam, the Election Commission is holding meetings with different political parties in Guwahati these days. Chief Election Commissioner Dr. Naseem Zaidi and two election commissioners remain present in the meeting. Hakhom Gana Parishad, BJP and Borderland People's Front have demanded two-face polls before Rungali Bihu. These festivities will begin in Assam in mid-April. BJP also urged the commission to deploy central paramilitary forces to guard the polling booths. Nepal government has decided to amend new constitution to address two key demands of agitating Madhesis regarding proportional representation and constituency delimitation in a bit to break the months-long political logjam. The decision was taken at an emergency cabinet meeting held at Singha Darbar. Meanwhile, India welcomed the developments as positive steps that help create the basis for a resolution of the current impasse in Nepal. The External Affairs Ministry is making fresh efforts to find the parents of Geeta, the speech and hearing impaired women who returned to India more than a decade after mistakenly foreign into Pakistan. A picture of Geeta is being circulated by Ministry of External Affairs as its best bet in hopes to locate the parents of the speech and hearing impaired young woman. The centre has sanctioned an assistance of Rs 2,443 crore from the National Disaster Relief Fund to four states affected by drought, landslides and flood. The assistance was approved during the meeting of the high-level committee chaired by Home Minister Rajnath Singh in New Delhi. The committee examined the proposals based on the report of Central Team, which visited the states affected by severe natural disasters. The Department of Consumer Affairs is celebrating the National Consumer Day 2015 today with the theme Safety and Healthy Food, Combating Food Adulteration. The National Consumer Rights Day is an annual occasion for celebration and solidarity within the national consumer movement and is an opportunity to promote the basic rights of all consumers. Air pollution in the national capital is of an emergency nature, the Delhi High Court observed and said that this situation would not have arisen if the authorities had implemented laws and rules in place to prevent environmental degradation. It directed officers of all concerned authorities, including Delhi Pollution Control Committee, that all the rules have to be followed as the situation today is of an emergency nature. The Met Department in Madhya Pradesh has forecast snow and rain in the next 24 hours in the region. According to the local weather department, fresh western disturbance is approaching in the region and snow in higher reaches and rain in lower hills is expected. Meanwhile, smog conditions prevailed in the national capital. Oil prices have fallen to levels not seen since 2004, surpassing the lows seen during the recession of 2008. Brent crude sank to $36.05 per barrel, its weakest since July 2004, before recovering slightly to $36.56 per barrel. A global oversupply has dramatically driven down the prices of oil, with suppliers failing to reach agreements to address the glut. Just 18 months ago, in June 2014, the price of oil was traded at $115 per barrel. Three rockets hit an area of the Afghan capital, Kabul, that contains many foreign embassies and government buildings, hours after a suicide attack killed six U.S. soldiers. It has been just over a one week that a Spanish embassy guesthouse was attacked in the Afghan capital. Taliban has mounted a series of high-profile attacks in the recent days, just as Afghanistan and Pakistan are making efforts to relaunch the stalled peace process. Eight were killed and at least ten were wounded in airstrikes on residential Yemeni neighborhood on Monday. The strike was carried out by Saudi-led coalition supporting Yemen's President Hadi in that country's civil war. The airstrike comes despite a conditional agreement to extend a seven-day truce. It follows a week of UN-sponsored peace talks in Switzerland in which the warring parties agreed on a broad framework for ending the nine-month-old war that has killed nearly 6,000 people. World number one women's doubles player Sanya Mirza will lead the Indian Challenge for next year's Fed Cup 
as the selection committee, headed by SP Misra, chose a four-member team for the Asia Oceana Group 1 matches to be held in Hua Hin in Thailand from 3rd to 5th of February. The ITA selectors also named the six-member squad for the South Asian Games to be held in Guwahati in February. Impressive performance by Indian paddlers ensured that India ended the 20th Commonwealth Table Tennis Championship with their best ever medal haul in the competition. India led the medal tally with three gold, five silver and seven bronze medals, including a gold and a silver in team championships for the total count of 16 medals, while Singapore finished behind India with four golds and a team bronze medal.